Fun, you are recognized for five minutes. Thank you, Mr. Chairman, and uh, thank you, Madam Secretary, for being here today. Um, just, just a few questions, and and, and I honestly, my this is not designed to be a political gotcha. It's just a reality of the world we live in today. But um, and also because a lot of times, you know, the press gets things different ways. I would like to hear from you, and and I apologize if I missed it while I was out at another hearing. But can you attest to the validity or the veracity of the, the situation you had a few months ago with the trip where you had a staffer that parked in a charging spot to hold a position for you so that you and your entourage could recharge your vehicles? Was that, was that situation true? Yeah, I've seen the reports. Uh, well, you were there. I mean, what, well, regardless of the report. I wasn't saving the spot. But, um, but let me just say I have a, a fantastic young staff. Just fantastic. Well, that's that's neither well, here nor there. I but, just want to but, say, but that somebody is it made true a mistake? that you had a staffer? I didn't in a gas-powered I, it one, is one of your gas, representatives is, parked in an electric charging spot to reserve the position for you so that you could do it and not be deterred from your travels. Was it that, was, is that it accurate? was poor judgment on but it's the true, part correct? of the team. Why do you think and poor judgment? But why do you think they did that? Um, I can only imagine they wanted to continue moving. But the bottom line is, it's not going to happen again. Okay. Well, it is interesting that that would happen. I would tell you, I. I don't have personally have an issue with electric vehicles. I think, you know, Teslas are kind of fun. I've enjoyed, you know, as a former carrier pilot, I like the acceleration you get from those. But the reality where I live in Florida, there's not an infrastructure that supports that. But I happened to be in California a week before last. I uh, went to rent my car, go out in the garage, and they tell me you can choose from any vehicle that's out there, pick what you want to drive away. And the only vehicles that were there were electric. And I went and asked the lady, I, I said, is this all you guys have in your vehicle fleet? She goes, no, actually, we have combustion cars too, but those have all been chosen. Because not surprisingly to me, people would rather use something that they're familiar with and something that they know that they can get charged up pretty easily. I was there for a day. I had back-to-back -back meetings the whole time, no time built into my schedule. I wish I had a staffer who could have parked a car in, in a spot and blocked a, a station for me. But, you know, all these vehicles were charged. The most charged one I saw was 85%. You have to return the vehicle at more than 70%. So somewhere along the way in my 24 hours that I'm in California, I've got to go find a charging station. I asked about that and was told, well, you know, there's apps for that. You can go online and find out where to go charge it. The technology is not there to support what this administration is doing. But just, you know, to, to further bolster that a little bit, uh, you know, California now likes to fancy themselves as a leader in the country, but God forbid the rest of the country follow their way. But by 2035, or you know, we're going to have 100% electric vehicles. That's 68% by 2030. Uh, by 2026, it's going to be 35%. But the reality today, China produces 90 of the batteries that are required for these. China produces 95% of the manganese, 70% of the cobalt and graphite, 60, 66% of the lithium, and 60% of the nickel. Um, the undersecretary of state, um, Secretary of State for Economic Growth, Jose Fernandez, had said, in order to meet the goals that we're going to have to do uh, to achieve these targets, we're going to have to increase our production of critical minerals by six to eight times, uh, the amount of lithium production by 42 times, and the amount of graphite by 25 times. With the hurdles we have with regulations to try to get that stuff permitted and done, it's never going to happen. And everybody knows that. And we, we see, we read stories of the Western auto manufacturers are concerned that this, these policies are driving auto manufacturing into the arms of the Chinese. It's a reality. They're out ahead of this on us. Good, good on them for that. But the truth is, and, and, and we all know it, that we, we do not have the ability to meet these timelines. So I, I'd like to hear from you, what is the game plan to marry up our regulatory environment with the, with the requirements that are coming down the line to, so that give me some confidence that these are, dead, these are deadlines that will be made. Because, yeah. Well, and, and just with one other point, the average used vehicle, the average age of a vehicle on the road now is 12 and a half years. So vehicles that are, you know, folks in California uh, in just a few years aren't going to be able to drive the cars that are being produced today. I mean, they'll be able to drive them. But as we know, as more of these corners that currently have gasoline available to them are converted to charging stations, it's going to get harder and harder to find uh, fossil fuel to refuel the vehicles. But help help assure me that you got a plan that we're not going to drive auto manufacturing into the arms of the Chinese. Yeah, this is exactly what the Inflation Reduction Act and the bipartisan infrastructure law are all about, which is to create and pull the full supply chain for manufacturing electric vehicles into the United States. And what we're seeing across the country is that it's happening. We've got all these battery manufacturers now in the United States, the supply chain moving to the United States. You're right about extraction of critical minerals. But excuse me, is, is that a clean 
Is that clean? Because yeah. because yeah. the data that I see would indicate that that really all you're doing is shifting the pollution from one source to another. I mean, yes, you're going to cut ultimately the carbon emissions coming out of, from those electric vehicles, but the production of those batteries, the disposal of them, is absolutely as dirty as anything that's coming out of the tailpipes of these combustion engine cars today. Well, do you disagree with that? Yeah, I do. I do because there is a whole overall strategy to make sure that these are uh, industrial facilities that reduce greenhouse gas emissions, that they're built to have lower uh, GHG emissions, and we want to make sure that we are responsibly extracting. Uh, minerals as well. We obviously want to partner with our allies. We want to recycle as much as we can. We want to find substitute materials, but we also want to do sustainable extraction. We have an old mining law. I think it needs to be uh, upgraded for the moment, and hopefully we can do that I, in I a bipartisan love, way. Pardon me, I know we're, we're running short of time, and I'm actually over, but I would love to hear more on the plan on how you intend to work with EPA on that, but I would tell you in Florida, where electric vehicles explode, catch on fire when they get wet, we have hurricanes. You cannot get out of, her, of, of Florida when a hurricane's bearing down an electric vehicle now. Simply is not possible. It just it doesn't exist, and we can show you the data. It may work somewhere else, but it's not going to work in Florida anytime soon. But thank you, Mr. Chairman, for indulging me. I yield back.